Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide, and now that 3.17 is live, this is a quick list of the essential tips and tricks for using the new features. This is not a comprehensive coverage of all the features, such as background and cosmetic changes, because there's nothing needed to know to use them. So I won't be covering Hurston Cloud, Skin Textures, Watery Eyes, Change the Object Streaming, Gen 12 Render Thread, Variations on Station Cleaning, or the Player Injury Poly Splash, or Weapons Animations, or Changes in Ground Vehicle Detection, or the Coffee Vendor. Other than, of course, that one sentence. Now, first, the rivers at Microtech. To start with, almost impossible to find this with night unless you have a party member already there to act as a beacon. During the day, there are three ways of reaching it. The first, is most simple, is to head straight out of New Babbage at bearing 205 for 436 kilometers until you reach the first Alpine Meadows biome and then just look around for it. This is the best choice if you have an aerodynamic ship like this Aero. The second is to quantum up to Port Tressler, set your heading at 105 and pitch 55, by 487 kilometers and then head straight down. And then if I'm not flying an aerodynamic ship, my preferred method is because it gets you quickly out of the atmosphere, doesn't have you spending much time in the atmosphere on the way down, and doesn't require you to be constantly checking behind you as to how far you've flown. So you have fly to Port Tressler, head towards OM5 until you are 770 kilometers from it, then turn towards OM3 until you are 1,736 kilometers away from it, and then head straight down looking for the river. Now you can wade into the river in a spacesuit. While it might look tempting to land your ship in the water, don't. Number two, Lorville has a new hospital and this increases its utility as a choice for your home planet. However, Lorville still has the disadvantage of having too few places to buy personal weapons or ship components other than those made by Hurston Dynamics. And by too few, of course, I mean none. Now, the hospital has two entrances. The first big entrance is off Levinson Square, and we've been seeing that closed up in the past. But the very convenient side entrance also exists near the Metro Center train station entrance. The side entrance will be the most convenient if you are heading right back to the spaceport. The main entrance will be more convenient if you first have to stop off at Tammany and Sons to re-equip some things. Three, there has been a change to medium ship shields. In recent patches, size 1 and 2 shields were bubble shields, while size 3 and larger were 4 quadrant shields. Now, size 1 and smaller remain bubble shields, while the size 2 shields have front and back shield faces. This means that you will quite literally have something covering your arse when you need to flee and recharge. This will change combat tactics quite a bit in larger fighters. Number 4. Loot Selling This is a major impact as it literally opens up a side career path as a scavenger. First, shops will only buy the same merchandise as they sell. No selling armor at a gun store, for example. Beyond that, they will also need to sell the same category of merchandise that are selling. In other words, if they aren't selling rocket launchers, they aren't buying rocket launchers. And next, to make it clear, they aren't selling rocket launchers, or grenade launchers, or rail guns, or sniper rifles, or assault weapons. Now, you might think that sucks, but the bigger picture is, is opening up both categories of goods that make looting for them rewarding, and opening up categories of goods for player-to-player -player commerce. You're going to want to have something available nowhere else to sell in your brand new merchantman, right? But what to do in the meantime with stuff you can find, but not sell? Well, you can try to negotiate person to person, stock them up in the expectation that user shops won't be that far off, or use them as spares to equip teammates with. But far the most important tip about loot selling is that you cannot sell directly from your ship inventory or ship hold. If you are arriving at a location you are expecting to sell, you have to move it either into the local station inventory or into your own armor and backpack storage. Having it on your back or on your hip does not count. Doing this piece by piece is a bother, so a good rule of thumb is that if it isn't worth at least three digits, it most likely isn't worth the bother of looting other than for personal use. An important part of personal use is going to be food and drink. Both not only have had their use rate increase, but also not reset to full during a bed log out. You go to bed hungry and thirsty, you're going to wake up hungry and thirsty. So get used to the habit of having a few food and drink in your armor or backpack and a few dozen in your ship to replenish it with. And don't be surprised about this. CIG has made it clear all along that planning ahead is expected to be an integral part of Star Citizen gameplay. Number 5. Ship to Ship Refueling Don't get fancy with this. Frankly, there won't be a lot of use for it until Pyro since refueling locations will remain commonplace in Stanton. But you might be able to find player dealers willing to undercut station prices, particularly station prices are now highly volatile thanks to Quanta. 
As a player seeking fuel, keep it simple, you are messing in close quarters with another player's major investment in ship and fuel. And although the improvements in ship position desync have made the operation easier, they still aren't riskless. So point your nose at the Starfare and select the T key to target under reticle. Tap the N key to request docking. Fly close to the rear. Do not try manual docking. Sure, we all know that you're a hotshot ace, but you are playing with another player's major ship with a fragile boom arm and hundreds and thousands of credits of fuel. Just hold the N key to initiate manual docking for the last few meters. Everybody will feel more comfortable with it. Now, after you've auto docked, just call up the ship services in your Moby Glass and order fuel as usual. The Starfarer captain will see the request and can fulfill it from the refueling console at the port aft corner of the bridge. So, as a Starfarer captain, how do you make money with refueling in 3.17? First, call up the Moby Glass and look at the commodity price alerts in the journal section. You will see some stations listing low prices for plasma fuel. Unfortunately, some rounding may cause some locations to look like they are giving away fuel for free. They aren't. It's just rounding. Go to those locations and tank up both your hydrogen and quantum. Unfortunately, we only have underpriced alerts for hydrogen. You can refill your external tanks at the station by selecting the manual rather than the automatic buttons. The automatic buttons just fills your main tank. Price spikes tend to happen at or above major landing zones. So, go to the orbital stations. When you get there, touch down on the pad and test the local price for fuel. Then decide how much you're going to try to underprice the station to attract customers. By operating around a station, you will stay within the protection zone of the station and not be as vulnerable. Be sure that you don't underprice so much that you are losing money on every liter. Now, if somebody wants your Starfarer to come to them, be cautious. Have them use a transport or combat assistance beacon for you to find them. Do not add them to your party unless you really trust them, as this gives them boarding rights. The basic process of being a refueler is this. They request docking. You approve docking with the left bracket key. You come to a full stop and move to the refueling station on the bridge. Extend the fuel arm. Go to the details page, which shows a schematic diagram of the main pipe and six tanks. When you click next to a tank, the chevrons will either point towards the central pipe or away from the central pipe to indicate the direction that the pump is working. Note that this can be used to transfer fuel from one tank to another. When the ship completes docking and the proper tank is unloading to the center pipe, open the main valve to the right. Messing with the pressure is entirely optional. Unless one of you has a real reason to be in a hurry besides impatience, don't. Number six, mining gadgets are now available. From my viewpoint though, the extra time to go EVA, attach the gadget to the rock, calibrate it and activate it, EVA back to the ship, and then afterwards EVA back out to the rock to hopefully retrieve it, means that they make sense in one and only one scenario. And that is that if you're dealing with a valuable rock that you simply cannot make the first crack on at all. So in choosing a mining gadget, go for the ones that reduce resistance. Have a few in your ship inventory, and then when you need one, take it from your ship inventory and put it in the lumbar area of your back. Go EVA and pull that with the 4 key. Place it on the rock, then adjust the three sliders until the waveform shows all green and the activate button is enabled. Activate it, head back to the ship, and do the cracking. And unless you like throwing money away, don't forget to go back out and retrieve it. Number seven, the Hull A is now in the game and available for sale at 80 US dollars warbound and 90 US dollars with store credit, both with only six months insurance. First, it's really remarkable that a small ship with small components will be able to carry 64 SCU of cargo. That is enough to be considered a legit hauler, which is good because trading is all it can do. No buggy hauling, no irregular cargo, etc. We don't know how much an advantage those external plates are going to be until the cargo refactor comes in as planned for 3.18. With only two size 1 weapons, don't take it any place unsafe. It also seems to struggle with full gravity, full atmosphere planets, so the primary use case for the Hull A seems to be moons to orbital bases and back. There are foundation ships and stepping stone ships. I get the feeling that the Hull A will be a stepping stone ship to bigger and more versatile and better defended haulers. It will undoubtedly be available in the IAE at close to or the same price with 10 year insurance and should be available in game currency in 3.18, which will then be also when we are likely to discover whether external cargo is much of a benefit. Either way, waiting seems advisable. 
So now an update on the Grow the Channel Ship giveaway. As of recording, we are at over 60% of the subscriber goal and over 51% of the membership goal to release to somebody. Their choice of either the Anvil Liberator, the ship shipping ship for shipping your ships, or the Misk Odyssey, the long duration exploration carrier. One entry per video, members are entered automatically. And if the winner is a member prior to the publication of the winning video and also at the time of the drawing, they will win both the Liberator and the Odyssey. For non-members, just subscribe and comment, somehow including the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the thing you shouldn't get too fancy about. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.